the Hawaiians, you know, again, metaphors are, are what everything is handed down by. Metaphors is what goes in the brain. The image is what goes in the brain, not the words. So the Hawaiians didn't have the word for, for energy as we're using it today. Instead, they, they used it, they used the word mana. And mana was their way of defining energy. And so just go through their definition of mana and, and the fact that it is energy, keep that in mind, and the different types of mana and how they generated it and what they did with it. Well, mana is, uh, you know, energy. And the Hawaiians also saw mana as a, a representation of water. That's the, the, I guess you would call it a metaphor for mana. And, you know, in Hawaii, since it wasn't on an island, they had, you know, water all the way around them. That was, you know, that's what they considered energy. And mana was generated with, you know, specific purposes. And with it, when you're generating that mana, you are using, you know, you're consciously breathing with an intent, which is installing an intelligence inside the breathing, which is changing the frequency of just breathing. Uh, in our normal everyday walking around in life, we're generating mana. We're generating energy to sustain our life. Yeah, right? to survive. In Star Wars Force terms, survive. that's the force. Mm -hmm. That's the life force. But when the Jedi, who have been trained they learn to tap in and call on the life force of all the others. Mm -hmm. right. And use it. Now, when they do that, then they're getting in what ancient Hawaiians call mana mana. Mm -hmm. Because now they are consciously looking to generate energy mm -hmm. from any source they can get it. Yeah. Either by generating additional energy in themselves by doing the ha breath, mm -hmm. or by tapping into an energy source. It's like outside. pulling it through the ground or, you know, consciously, you know, taking it from a, or blending it in with, from a tree or, you know, using nature qualities with that. Whatever being then when they, so each of the three cells basically has their own mana. Right? So in this case, the normal everyday breathing that you do and keep in your life is all run by the subconscious and we'll give it a Hawaiian name in a minute. And so, again, we'll get into you know, the three selves, uh, Unuhi Pili, which is generating mana, which is your normal everyday life force. Then when you consciously want to have more energy... Did you say that the Unuhi is uh, your subconscious? I don't know. Did I say that? Unuhi Pili is your subconscious. It's the automated part that's running your life. Whether you like it or not or know it or not. <laughs> One of my famous quotes... <laughs> <laughs> Whether you know it or not, or like it or not. All right. Uh, you need Pili, the automated part of your body is running everything. It's, it's controlling the glasses and you're flipping your fingers or you're scratching your head that you're not even aware of consciously. In fact, you're only consciously aware of like 1% of what's going on around you. Uh, the Unihi Pili is, is, is aware of 100% of what's going on and is looking after you. And that sleeps. And... Yep. When it's you sleep awake. and everything else. So when you sleep, you know, Pili doesn't sleep. It's awake. It's Uhani or your conscious mind or your conscious self that goes to sleep. And while it's resting, you know, then again, Unuhi Pili is there generating it. But when you're awake and you want to consciously do something and you take control of your breathing, you put yourself into an altered state, then you are generating a different kind of energy. And this energy is additional mana, and so they refer to it as mana mana. In other words, it's more energy, but it's not the same mana. This is something you gotta be very, very aware of, that when you hear mana mana in the ancient Hawaiian terms, it's not just more mana. It is a different mana right, than, than your normal everyday life force that you're generating. And you're generating it for a specific purpose. And in that comes into your thought form, your intention, mm -hmm. you know, and lots of other things. And so what's some other things just real briefly besides well, when you're besides mana mana, you're actually engaging both Yuhani and Unihipili. And you know, this is creating balance and harmony and a harmonic frequency in between the Yuhani and the Unihipili. 
which allows them to work together better. And uh, for an example, if you lose your keys, if you do some ha breathing and calm yourself down, you are able then to ask, where are my keys? And you get an answer. But if you're just focusing on your Yuhane conscious ego level at a heightened state, you, are, you won't be able to find your keys. And this is, just shows how when you're in balance with just those two parts, how things can happen a lot easier. Well, she's also demonstrating something as, as she's doing it there. And that is that, that there's more to generating energy than just breathing. Uh, and you want to be congruent. So if you're sitting there totally stone like this, <sighs> you might be generating energy, but you're not maybe generating the right kind or as much as you could because of the physical things he's that you're doing. He's closed off. He's closing off so, his energy. So, and I'm, 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 on the, I'm on to constrict it and hold it in. Uh, or if I'm sitting here, <sighs> there's, there's an intent that's being sent to my brain about what this energy is for. Bottom line is the whole generation process doesn't take it very efficiently. or you know, And so not what's going to happen is you're going to generate a kind of energy that may not be in your best interest that you were really wanting to when you've got when you're on target with your purpose. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that plays into it, it from a standpoint of generating energy is while you're going through the generation process, part of the intention that you're in your thought form that you're doing is also going to be controlled by the other five senses. And so you need to be aware and utilize those other five senses so that they can also feed in to the energy generation process. This is the reason you see in a lot of cultures, uh, most prevalent in this country, going back to the Native Americans, mm -hmm. you will see, and, and back to the Hawaiians in particular, which we'll get to a little bit later, you'll see chants, you'll see symbols, you'll see colors, you'll see representations of certain type of energies that they equate to certain animals. And this is all done so that they can use the other senses to feed in in a energy generation for a specific purpose. So it's not just breathing. It is also those other senses that you want to invoke. Mm -hmm. And this is where even colors come in. Yeah. And even what colors you're well, thinking. Well, your uni, your, your subconscious doesn't deal with, with words or, you know, stuff like that. It deals with pictures, images, colors, you know, uh, different senses than the actual physical senses like uh, your psychic senses uh, you know the the whenever you sense someone is walking up behind you that's your uni instructing you that it senses something behind you uh, and this is something you can't see with your your physical eye or you you know not physically touching this is something different than your physical senses you don't hear them coming up behind you mm -hmm. you know you don't, feel you, them, you don't feel them coming up behind you. You don't see them coming up behind yeah. you. You don't smell. Well, some people you can smell coming up behind you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But most of them you can't. Mm -hmm. You certainly can't taste them coming up behind you. Although oh, sometimes I thought I did. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, and then you're, you, you know, you honey. I always see the Yuhani as actually in control of the five senses because you can control, you know, your eyes and, you know, well, not all five senses, I guess, but, you know, it is a, your Yuhani can tell your uni what to, you know, pay attention to and what to store and, you know, so you, are, you can consciously take control of some of your senses and use it as a way to send to uni. Well, this is very, very true when it comes to you know, when you come into the realm of hands-on healing. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when Uhani directs the hand to become a sensor mm -hmm. and to, you know, generate and, and radiate a certain type of energy to sense another kind of energy, mm -hmm. then Uhani is directly, you know, telling, you know, Unahi Pili, you know, and your hands what type of energy. touch to, mm -hmm. you know, feel, what type of energy to feel. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're feeling but you're feeling differently than physical touch. Yeah. You're feeling without touching. Mm -hmm. But if the key here is then that, again, you're looking for harmony. Mm 
So the, the basic concept here is that we want to look for the three cells. We won't look for energy generation through breathing. We want to enhance that energy generation by consciously including all five of our senses or the senses that we can use in a particular situation. But in a lot of cases, if, if you're doing, you know, if you're on a bomb disposal squad, you want to be able to smell, you know, mm -hmm. taste and everything else. Right? Yeah. Uh, even when you walk into to a boardroom to give a presentation or a customer walks up in front of you or a potential customer walks in the door, you need to be able to use all your senses and all your energies, you know, to not only sense the person walking in, but also then to generate the types of energies that are going to interact with him in a harmonious way. Because mm -hmm. that's where it really comes in, is where the harmony comes in. And we'll talk about it, we're talking about it here outside the body. Because everybody wants to be in harmony with themselves. So if you go into a meeting in harmony with the people that's in the meeting, things are going to go your way because you are already at that energetic level. One of the things we haven't talked about here, and we've, 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 you know, we're not in balance, mm -hmm. so we have to get in balance. Mm -hmm. We've given too much attention up to this point in time to Uhani and Uni Apili. Mm -hmm. Yes. So talk a little bit about Amakua. Well, Amakua is defined as the um, utterly trustworthy parental spirit, and um, a lot of people actually refer to the Amakua as being outside yourself. Uh, up here or something kind of abstract but uh, you, if you look at it from an energy standpoint it is an energy field that goes around you and you know is the outermost energetic level which then contains Yuhane and Uni Hapili but the, the Amaku is considered the uh, I, don't, I don't even know if I should say this but the uh, but I, the God within, but I don't want to say that. Okay. All right. Well, I, I will say it in a different way. Okay. Right? And, and I say it this way. All right. You are God. All right. Not that you're the son of God or you're connected to God or you're part of God. I say that you are God. And I mean it from this standpoint that your Amakua is, radiates from the inside out and is... And its extent is far, far reaching than is the Uhani's extent or the Unahipili's extent. Uh, and, and so from that aspect, and it's your amakua and your energy, your wavelength, the, the intelligence, the information, the request that you put in that energy that is broadcast to the entire world. And, and when I say broadcast to the entire world, because all the other amakuas in the world are all overlapping and, 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 okay. and exist in the mm -hmm. same universe. And they call the Hawaiians call it the Po Amakua, the great company of, of Amakuas. It's just like we, we give the example here of, you know, my cell phone, mm -hmm. right? Where we're sitting right now, you know, occupying the same space as our bodies is millions of phone calls mm -hmm. of which we're totally aware of. Mm -hmm. So we're actually... There's two universes that we know of, at least two, yeah. the one that we're in talking in now, and the cell phone universe that coexists in the same space at the same time. Mm -hmm. okay. Different, kind of different dimension type. And a different dimension, but the bottom line is they're a different frequency, mm -hmm. a different energy, different intelligence within them. Mm -hmm. right? The same with us. The three selves exist within our bodies all at the same time, coexisting with each other on different planes, different levels, different wavelengths. Mm -hmm. right? But they're One, all three there. They're all three there, and they all three emanate from every place in your body outward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the Amakua is the outermost reaches of that. Mm -hmm. right? uh, and it's interacting with all the other Amakuas. Mm -hmm. Now, if those Amakuas get together, and say, ah, you know, you know, Fred and, and Mildred Almakua agree with Betty and Barney Almakua that you know that Yates should <laughs> have kind of like Facebook, Almakua Facebook or something. There you go. There you go. <laughs> like a network. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Network what do you think? What do you think? What do you, what do you think? All the, the the social networks and everything. Where the you know 
this whole concept of the internet, mm -hmm. right, be, all being interconnected, but those only find those who are looking for those who are looking for them. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? The exact same thing is happening with these Amakuas, except we don't need the internet. We don't need a hardwire. And it's done with the intent of, you know, for yeah. the greatest good. Yeah. And if, if you were to send out a broadcast over Facebook to all your Facebook friends and say, mm -hmm. you know, I need some money. I'd like for end of each of you to send me two bucks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That's probably what happened. Mm -hmm. But with the case of Amakuas, and you present that, in the proper way, mm -hmm. all those Amakuas will get together and they might all send you two bucks each. They might send you more. They might send you more, but you might you might see that one of them will send you a whole bunch of bucks mm -hmm. at the request of the others might, for, what, for whatever reason. But it would only do that if it's for the high, highest good of the person and for the other people that are involved. Ah, you just hit another point. What you're calling the highest good and for the good of all, mm -hmm. means that the Amakuas stay in harmony. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, they're constantly in harmony. So yeah, they're constantly from, a, from a Yohane and Uni Apili standpoint, we're always trying to reach that level to be in harmony with the Ama, you know, the Amakua. But the Amakuas themselves are always in harmony with each other. Yeah, yeah. And so if you request something that's going to disrupt that harmony, it's not going to happen. Yeah. If you request something that's within, you know, in harmony with that harmony, mm -hmm. you get an answer, don't you? Yep. And the answer is yes, not no. Mm-hmm. Right? And so that's basically then what we're talking about. And so if you, if you think about that, then we got one more, because we basically now we've talked about seven of the ten selves, right? We've talked about the physical blood and flesh of the human being. We've talked about, you know, the, the Uhani, Unahipili, and Amakua being the energetic bodies, you know. We've talked about the energies of each one of those bodies. Mana, we didn't talk about mana or mana we got, we, we need, okay, that's where we're getting. We've talked about mana, we've talked about mana mana, but we haven't talked about the energy of the Amakua. And the energy of the Amakua that goes out and, and sustains the Amakua is the energy called Mauna Loa. And Mauna Loa requires a different kind of energy than does you know, the Uhani or Unahipila. Mm -hmm. And so the, now the energy is transformed again from you know, Mauna to Mauna Loa. And this so transformation. Mana to mana mana to mana loa. Okay, from mana to mana mana to mana loa. Mm -hmm. Now, in doing this, again, the, the, it's looking for a specific energy, and it's not. It's this energy is not sent to Amakua. It is. It is basically expanded out. So you're generating energy here. It is being changed and expanded out to the Amakua. Now, for for purposes of you know, relating that to generation to generation to generation, and you're teaching this to a six-year-old, then you're going to use different terms. And so you use the term sent. You're going to send energy to Amakua. Right? And you're not sending it from the standpoint of you're not bundling it up and asking the postman to come and take it and deliver it to him. Right? That's not what's taking place. You're actually doing a transformation that's more like the power generation plant 100 miles away generating electricity at, at you know, 50,000 volts, sending it down to transmission lines to a transformer in a substation in your city where it goes down to 20,000 volts, sending it out to a power line you know, next to your house at 5,000 volts, and, and there's a transformer hanging outside of your house that transforms that 5,000 volts into 125 volts or 115 volts. 